Hi, I'm Tara. And I'm Michael. And we're from livingonadime.com. Today we're doing part two in our series on chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia. Um, today I'm doing things that help me to feel better. Um, when we first got married, it was really hard because Mike didn't understand. I tried to warn him and I said, are you sure you want to marry somebody who's chronically ill? And he's like, oh yeah, I love you and all this. You know how it is when you're first, you know, in love. But <laughs> 20 years later, you know, he, he's still with me, thankfully, but you know, well, he can explain better, I guess, but. Well, <laughs> she said I'm chronically ill, um, but we were doing stuff together all the time, going places, and she seemed to be full of energy. And I thought, okay, well, if this is what it is, it's not that big a deal. Um, and that went on for six months till we got married. And, and what then, he didn't see was we would go out on a date, but what I would come home and I would be dead on the couch then, and I would not be able to move for two days, but yeah. So after we got married, um, almost right away, <laughs> She was pretty much laying on the couch all the time. And, well, you did have a job for a little bit For a little time. bit, I kept trying, yeah. But it was, so she would work for a little bit and then come home and then crash on the couch and she would just be on the couch all the time. And uh, for a while we moved to Texas because I knew some people there that I thought could help with my work. Um, but while we were there, it was more of an issue that Tara was in bed the entire six months. I could not there. move when we lived in Texas. She yeah, did not get horrible. out of bed at all. And I was thinking, oh man, what have I gotten into? <laughs> because I was, I, I just didn't understand it. And it was really difficult. Uh, I know she was having some difficulty, but it was really difficult to be in the situation where I was thinking, what's going on? Is this the way it's always going to be now? <laughs> so um, we did move away from Texas. And just and so you know, it was the heat and humidity in Texas that really we, did it to me. It was... We assumed that was the issue, yeah. and so we wanted to move somewhere like Colorado, where we had come from, but not yet back to Colorado. And so we ended up going to Idaho, which was similar and, and was yeah. helpful. Um, it was a little shocking going from apparently full of energy to being married and having no energy. <laughs> And uh, then, and I think that was the sickest that you ever were. Since yeah, I've Texas known you. was the worst. So, yeah. So, uh, really, she was completely not getting out of bed at all. Um, and so. Then when we got to Idaho and it was cooler and the humidity was low, I was able to perk up a little bit and do a little bit better. Yeah. And, but. and I also, so we've been married for almost 21 years. Well, it'll be 21 years yeah, here this month. And, um, I didn't really recognize until we had been married for 10 or 12 years really how to know when she's sick. So she would say she was sick, she would look okay, and I would notice things like, well, you painted a bedroom today, but uh, you didn't, but the house is a disaster. <laughs> I didn't do the laundry, I didn't do the and, dishes. And... and those kinds of things were a little frustrating <laughs> uh, because I, I just really didn't understand how to recognize when she's sick. And some of those things I try to discourage doing extra major uh, seasonal changes if daily things aren't happening. Because if I paint, if I like paint a room or something, I be, cannot do anything else. Like, sometimes for yeah. a couple of days yeah. after that. I can get the painting done or I can get like a major gardening thing done or, you know, whatever. But... I can't do anything else after that. I mean, that's it. I do that, nothing else. And everything goes to pot and it's really frustrating. But yeah. I started to recognize after uh, quite a few years that uh, sh when she has the chronic fatigue syndrome flare, she'll get a pale. And we discovered that the Alka-Seltzer helped with that. Um, and then I just... So he'll buy five or six boxes of Alka-Seltzer now to keep on hand when we do, because this really perks me up. We, I don't know why, but the baking soda and aspirin that's in this, which if I don't have this, I'll just take two aspirin and a half a cup of water and a half a teaspoon of baking soda and take it all together. And for some reason, it works. But it's not quite as well when it's not in the fizz, right? Yeah, I don't know. Well, it works pretty good, but yeah, something in the fizzing of this really 
really helps me. I don't know why. And well, I know why, because this has citric acid in it too. So the citric acid really helps me also, which I notice if I drink a glass of orange juice, it really helps me perk up too. But so with the chronic fatigue syndrome, she will be all pale and laying around and her expression on her face will be really strange. She'll be really, like I said, really pale and almost like she's not present at all. And things can be going on, the kids can be writing, <laughs> and, and she really can't respond very well. Then uh, when she has fibromyalgia, uh, her skin turns a strange color and gets kind of brown around her eyes, and then she gets kind of irritable and unreasonable about things. And I used what to think... What? I used to think... What do you mean I get unreasonable about things? <laughs> and I used to think that this is just somebody being unreasonable, and, and after a while I started realizing, oh, this is pain and confusion. It's pain and I can't get my mind to work. Mental and... confusion and frustration. So after learning that, I started to realize, oh, hey, do you need me to rub you now? Or would you like to take a bath? I can go draw some water for that. Or something in order to get, because the fibromyalgia is a muscle thing, so rubbing helps a lot. Yeah. And sometimes we'll, in the evening, um, go and I'll rub her for a while on whatever part's hurting the most. When we first got married, um, she would have these sudden jolts in bed where she would shake a lot because the muscles... It was restless leg syndrome we finally figured out. And... But I was able to rub her legs and she would shake a lot and it would be painful while I was rubbing it. But then after that, it would be completely relaxed yeah. and she would fall asleep in which less than a, a minute. Which was a miracle. Once we figured that out, that was a miracle. So yeah. learning which of the two it is made it helpful because along the way we've learned that certain things help her. Help chronic fatigue syndrome. But it but only helps help. if it's one or the other yeah. issues. Okay, so I'm going to run through some of my tips, I guess, that I use to help me feel better. Um, wow, I pretty much keep trying everything. I, if something new comes out, I give it a try, I mean, to some degree. There was a point where she said, I've just realized I just have to embrace the fact that I'm sick, but then she goes through stages where yeah. I have to figure out a cure. Yeah, I go through where I think, okay, I'm just going to be sick the rest of my life, just deal with it, and then I keep going, okay, there has to be something to figure this out. And just most recently, um, we spent about $10,000 for me going to a functional medicine doctor. I'm sorry. And <laughs> he did help some. Um, we discovered I had a couple of chronic infections and I went on some antibiotics for three months and then I had to go on um, yeast medication for three months. And um, there was a couple of things like that. We found out that I have some food allergies and sensitivities. So I kind of work with those a little bit. And um, he kind of helped a little bit. I don't know that it was worth the money, but... Um, you know, it did give me a little insight. So I'm gonna run through some of the things real quick. So for chronic fatigue syndrome, the thing that helps me the most is sleep. There's three things that really help CFS. If you get sleep, stay away from stress and don't exercise heavily. If you can do those things, you can keep your chronic fatigue syndrome under control. Um, now it's hard because sleep is a big one. So some things that I've tried for sleep is melatonin helps sometimes, but it does leave me hungover, so I don't take it, but it might help some people. Uh, valerian, even sleepy time tea, something like that can help. Um, you can do um, even prescription medications or antidepressants, but for me, the side effects were way worse. They it were, was disastrous it every was, time. Oh, I turned into this horrible monster when I was on antidepressants, so I won't even touch them anymore. And sometimes but, she would be great for a week or two and then turn to being yeah. extremely yeah. hostile. It was a nightmare, and so I, I just stay away from them. Well, and I had to realize, okay, you need to stop this because it interferes yeah. with your thinking and she just wasn't going to say, oh, hey, I'm feeling strange. And she just didn't even occur to her. Yeah. So um, I don't do antidepressants or anything, but you know, they do help some people. So if you can take those, then go ahead. Um, that's about all I can do for the chronic fatigue syndrome. Um, I do take NADH, which is a pill that um, is a enzyme type thing, but, or 
Is it an enzyme or amino acid? I don't remember. Acid. An amino acid? It's an amino acid. I do take this, and I did discover that if I take the NADH and I take 12.5 milligrams once a day on an empty stomach, so I take it in the morning before I eat or anything, as soon as I wake up, I just pop one of those. My energy increased probably, wow, probably 50%. I would say I was at a one before I started taking this as far as an energy level goes and I moved myself up to probably a four or five so it really significantly helped me and well and at first she it wasn't very obvious that it was helping and it took after, me three months to get to kick in and at one point she went off of it and we realized oh hey this is um this is working really well so you need to go back on one quick thing uh we if you have CFS or fibromyalgia, there will be all kinds of people, especially on the internet, saying, I can cure you. We've got this. All the mar multi-level marketing And it's marketing always the stuff. same thing that cures every possible thing in the world, and we don't. This, we tried it because it was in a Columbia University study, which had had mi minor success at first, but longer yeah. term, better success. So we tried it. Yeah, and, and it does take three months for this to kick in. So give it a good three months before you decide. And one way you can tell is you may think, oh, it may not be working. Go off of it for a month and see, and then go back on if it's not. And it does not take as long to kick back in the second time. It only took a couple of weeks the second time to kick back in when we realized it was working. So I've been on this for, wow, I've been on this for like 15 years now. And this is one of the big ones that really helps. Um, okay, things that help my fibromyalgia. Um, taking a regular Alka-Seltzer, not the cold, nothing like that. Regular Alka-Seltzer, it has citric acid, aspirin, and baking soda in here, sodium bicarbonate. This helps both my chronic fatigue and my fibromyalgia. It helps with the memory problems, that kind of thing it helps perk me up get me off the couch and it helps with pain because it has the aspirin and i don't know if it's because it's dissolved my stomach has to do less work but if i take one of these about 10 15 minutes i can literally get off the couch from saying please just dig a hole in the backyard and roll me in it i can't take this anymore to oh well maybe i can get up and go to the bathroom <laughs> Because, I mean, it does get that bad. So this is one of the big things that really, really helps me. And it's cheap and it's easy. And I would say try this first on anything if you want to try something to help with your chronic fatigue syndrome or your fibromyalgia. So the next thing that helps is sleep. Really, it is imperative, imperative that you get sleep. Um, Oh boy, this is a big one. So I have tried, like I said earlier, melatonin, valerian, sleepy time, uh, Benadryl, prescription sleep things. Um, what? I don't know. Tons and tons of sleep things. We even spent uh, $1,500 on an air bed for me to sleep on. And honestly, you just have to keep trying things that help you sleep. Uh, for me, for a long time, I slept on the couch because that was the only way I could sleep because what I would do was sleep in the corner of the couch and put my spine in the middle so that nothing was touching either side of my body because it just hurt too bad to sleep. So I would sleep on the couch with my spine in the corner of the couch and take all the pressure off. Um, I did start getting neuromuscular massages and those did help. I'll go into a little bit more on that, but I was able to at least move to our bed. Um, An osteopath. Yeah. And so I'll go back into that. Um, but sleep is the big one. Now, currently what I'm doing for sleep is I am using some essential oils and, um, I'll put the link in, um, I'll put the link to what I'm using in the um, comment, or I mean in the description below there. But right now, the essential oils seem to be helping me really well. And so I just rub that on the bottom of my foot and that seems to help with the sleep. Um, I also sleep with a fan. Um, I make my kids when they're younger, um, 
They go to bed at seven o'clock because I cannot be up with kids till 10 o'clock at night. I need time to kind of relax and quiet down because noise really gets on my nerves and really gets me irritated. The dog <laughs> barking nine blocks away. Yeah, the dog bark, dogs barking and all that kind of stuff just really, and it's like every nerve in my body is on fire, so I need to have time to relax. So I make my kids go to bed at seven o'clock. They are in bed at seven o'clock, I don't care. I also, when my kids are younger, make them take a nap, whether they're tired or not, until they're about five years old. If they don't wanna sleep, they have to play in their room quietly for an hour to an hour and a half. But I need that time during the day when my kids were little because I could not keep going for eight to 10 hours with little kids going on and on, so. And it wasn't a problem. We would just, we would have them go to bed at seven. And then when they got a little older, we would have them go at seven for reading and coloring and yeah. playing time. And that Between would... about six and 12, yeah. And then when they got to be 12. 12, then we'd have to let them stay up a little longer. Yeah, they stay up till about 8.30 after they're 12, and then the teenagers get to stay up later. But, you know, make sure if you have little children that they get in bed because you need your rest, even if it's just sitting down in the quiet for a little while, you need your rest. Um, let's see. Um, Pain medications. So I have pretty much permanently been on pain medication for the last 27 years. I either take ibuprofen, Tylenol, or aspirin. I have tried um, bigger pain medicines. The only time I have not been in pain was when three times out of the four kids that I had, three times I got an epidural. And after that, oh my goodness, for two weeks I was in heaven. It was like after the birth of my kids, it was great. I felt good. I didn't have pain. I wish I could just have a permanent epidural. Of course, I would get nothing done then. <laughs> but, but really, that's the only thing that has relieved my pain. Um, I have taken narcotics before, um, but those just leave me drugged up and I didn't want to get hooked on them. So I will occasionally, if I have a really long day, take something like that at night to help me sleep, but I will pay for it in the morning by being groggy and that kind of thing. Um, so for pain medications, I pretty much keep it to over-the-counter type things. Um, you can take antidepressants for pain, that type of thing, but it does not help me, it makes me worse. It'll help me for a week or two and then I'm just a berserk person and I just go crazy on them. So I stay away from the antidepressants. Um, Stretching helps fibromyalgia. If you can get into stretching, do the stretching. I'm not very good at doing it, but if you do the stretching and light exercise, it really does help with fibromyalgia. Um, that's a big one because fibromyalgia, exercise makes it better, chronic fatigue syndrome, it makes it worse. So it's kind of a catch 22 for me. I need it to keep my muscles going, but just do some light exercise. Even if it's just two or three minutes, just start working yourself up to getting the exercise. Uh, massage. <laughs> so here's the deal on massage. It really helps. And my wonderful husband here helped me when we first got started and we just could not afford it. He, I taught him how to do the massage and I have deep tissue and it hurts really bad. I mean, it really hurts. <laughs> it feels like somebody is running an iron on my muscles, but if he can rub it deeply, it will help afterwards relax those, relax those muscles so that I can um, sleep and it really feels better. It is sore. But it really does help and like we were talking earlier when i had the restless leg as soon as he started rubbing my calves two to three nights a week it really it's been totally gone i haven't had restless leg for probably i don't know 17 18 years now because he rubs my calves and what we do is he will just get the lotion out and we'll I'll lay down on the couch and we'll watch a movie for an hour or two in the evening and he'll just rub me and I know I got a good one <laughs> and I understand not everyone has as wonderful of a husband as I do but, wow. but <laughs> I need to record this <laughs> but he will do that for me and that is true love but you know if he can rub me three to four or five nights a week 
it really helps and he'll do my legs one night and he'll do my back another night and he'll do my neck and shoulders another night or my feet when i had plantar fasciitis really bad he would do my feet for me um just whatever's hurting the worst at the moment yeah i kind of just go whatever's the worst at the moment um and i do have a lot of pain in my neck and shoulders um because that's where i keep all my stress and everything that's what they keep telling me and um headaches from that and I did discover that part of my headaches were due to I was clenching my jaw because I'm in pain all the time so I started clenching so that's a whole nother thing but you just kind of have to keep working out each of those things um and usually I would with the massage I would start barely touching and she would say oh, oh that's so hard I was thinking yeah. I'm hardly touching you and then as the time would go on uh it would get deeper and more intense um so usually like in an hour we go from really really soft to really really kind of digging in to break up because she gets these knots i can tell it's going down when the knots get smaller and so the it, it seems if it seems like she's doing okay then i'll kind of increase the intensity so yeah and that really helps work out my muscles um the one thing i have found is neuromuscular massage helps me the best now i'll tell you we live in Colorado and we found this guy in Boulder. His name's Raymond. <laughs> and we love Raymond. I love Raymond. And I wish I could go to Raymond every week, but Raymond is $120 for an hour and a half and it's a 45 minute drive and $20 in gas. And so I only go once in a while. But when I went to the neuromuscular massage and switched from just the floofy, you know, feeling better massage to the neuromuscular, that's when I saw the biggest relief. When I went to him, I, for the first time in years, was able to actually sleep in my bed. And so that kind of massage really, really helps me get um, the relief that I need. So if you can find a neuromuscular massage therapist or maybe find a massage school you could go to, um, that really works out the kinks. And, and chiropractic or osteopathic medicine, my doctor was an osteopath for a while, he also would adjust me so that it would get my muscles back in my spine and everything would be in alignment and my muscles wouldn't be pulling and that kind of thing so the osteopathic helps too um the next thing is hot baths now for me i take a hot bath in epsom salts almost every single day it really helps relieve the pain now some people with fibromyalgia cannot handle the baths they prefer a shower and that's okay just do whichever is best but for me if i can soak in a hot bath with epsom salts for 20 minutes or so it relieves the pain so that i can go sleep a little bit better um i noticed that the nights when i've just been really busy or something and i just am too tired i'm like just i don't feel like taking a bath tonight and i go get in bed if I don't, at 11.30 at night, I'm going in and getting in the tub because it she just... She won't sleep at all. Yeah, I just won't sleep at all. So it really helps with the pain relief. And another thing I noticed just recently is the Epsom salts actually help heal my wounds better. Um, it used to be I would get little cuts and things like this, and it would take two or three weeks to heal it. And now when I'm soaking in the Epsom salts, it'll be a week or so, and they're all healed. So... I'm not sure what it is about it, but it has helped heal my wounds and that kind of thing when I get, you know, little scratches or cuts or whatever, and I don't have them for near as long. Um, another thing is he sit with a heating pad at night when you're watching TV. If you don't want to take a bath, put a heating pad on your back, your shoulders, your legs, wherever you're hurting. Um, get you one of those massage chair things. I'll, I have this thing that I put in my chair and I'll just let it roll up and down. It's a shih, shih tzu <laughs> massage chair <laughs> <bleep> that one. <laughs> yeah. and i'll do that and that'll help um relieve some of the pain <laughs> shiatsu that's what it's i was talking about the dog <laughs> see the you whole got a dog thing. rolling up and down yeah. your neck <laughs> making you feel better <laughs> so, oh that's a good one okay <laughs> see the brain doesn't quite function all the time um and then just rest during the day if i'm doing a major project like painting or something sit down and just sit and rest get your feet up and just take a break and that really helps kind of keep you going so that you can keep going through the day like your tea thing 
uh, oh yeah, I have an article about how I do things with CFS on, and it's take a drink of tea, do another thing, sit down, drink more tea, <laughs> because I really just keep going. Um, and I shouldn't be, I need to, to stay, um, I need to sit down and rest more than I do, but I just keep pushing myself. Um, a couple of other things is, um, let's see, I live in a cool, dry climate. I've noticed I've lived in Kansas and Texas and the heat and the humidity really make me a whole lot worse. We specifically moved back to Colorado so that I could start functioning again and the heat and humidity really help cut down on um, my sickness. Um, let's see, some things like, this is crazy, but I limit my phone calls and I live it, limit my social activity. When I do things where I talk a lot, I'm not sure what happens in my brain, but my brain literally shuts down. It's, I cannot function anymore. I don't know why there's something misfiring, but it just does not work. So I have to limit the amount that I'm on the phone and I can't do social activities very much where I'm talking and that kind of thing. Um, run the air conditioner. If you're running the air conditioner when I get really hot, for some reason, it makes me sick again. So we have to make sure we keep the air conditioner on if and that kind above, of thing. If it gets above 80 degrees in the house, that's the turning point. Yeah. She suddenly goes downhill and will not recover the rest yep. of the day. Mike can always tell when he comes home and the house is above 80, he knows that it's a problem. Um, then other things I do, my kids and my husband do all the heavy work. They do the vacuuming, they do the cleaning of the shower, they do the tub, um, they do the dishes. What do I do? <laughs> Just Sorry, kidding. I'm to think <laughs> um, but you keep the TV remote warm. <laughs> oh yeah, Just no, kidding. not really. I mean, I do do a lot no, during the day, but you know, I do have them do the major things that are really hard: live heavy lifting, heavy moving stuff. I still do a lot of that kind of stuff, especially with my gardening and thing. But um, you know, you're the big idea person. I'm the idea person. I have a great idea. I'm the supervisor. Everyone I know needs to come yes. take care of doing so, it. So. Anyway, I have a list on the website that you can go see that we have all of these things that, you know, tips and stuff I do. I'm going to run through my supplements really quick here um, and let tell you kind of what I'm taking. So I have a huge pile of supplements here, um, but this is what's helping me. So magnesium malate, this, and it has to be the malate. This really helps with... Um, the irritable bowel and it helps with the muscle pain. I take, uh, how much do I take? I take um, um, 2 point, or no, 425 grams, ma oh, milligrams, 425 milligrams of magnesium and it's 2.5 grams of malate. So I take this because it's two in one. You can- you just take one at a time? I take, I just take two at night and one during the day. Um, you can get it in the pill form though. If you get it in powdered, it is nasty and you're not gonna be able to drink it. And I don't know what I'm gonna do with this pot bottle. I accidentally picked up the wrong one. But um, the magnesium malate works really good for muscle pain. And also on all of these supplements and stuff, if you go to a vitamin store, if it doesn't work, most of them, if there's more than two thirds of the bottle left, they will give you a refund. And a lot of these times I'll try something and it doesn't work or I have a bad reaction to it and I take it back. So like this one, I lost the receipt on, but most of the time I would take it back and get my money back. So anyway, magnesium malate is helpful for um, irritable bowel and for muscle pain. This helps muscle pain a lot. Um, okay, Tylenol, I take Tylenol, aspirin, ibuprofen. If you take ibuprofen, do it on a full stomach, but that's for pain relief. Um, vitamin D. Vitamin D helps with energy. Um, I can't drink milk anymore. I'll touch that. I'll touch on that just briefly, but, um, vitamin D really helps with energy and brain fog. Um, oops, I had two vitamin D. Okay. Um, fish oil. I have no idea what this is really doing, <laughs> but I notice a difference when I take it. I think mostly the brain fog maybe, maybe, um, but the fish oil does help with some of the pain and some of the brain fog. But I do notice a big difference. It's just kind of a general feeling of feeling better when I take this. And I take um, 4,000 milligrams of EPA and DHA a day. 
4,000 milligrams, and you have to make sure it's the EPA and the DHA. And I take this particular brand because I have to take less pills. Some of the ones you get at Walmart and that, you'll have to take eight to 10 pills to get 4,000 milligrams. So I would go with the expensive one. This is actually cheaper in the long run. Um, oh, biotin. Biotin helps, for some reason, um, people with CFS and fibromyalgia have problems with hair loss. And I started taking this for my hair loss, but I noticed it started helping my muscle pain with my fibromyalgia. And I looked it up and some people are having that side effect. So I take biotin, 10,000 milligrams of biotin every day now, and my hair's growing back and it helps with the muscle pain. Um, then I just started taking plain unflavored gelatin. And this really, really helps with the muscle pain also, which is my biggest problem. But, and I did feel better and I was sleeping great, but then I kind of turned around and started not sleeping at night. So I've had to really cut it back. So you might try just taking a half a teaspoon or a teaspoon of this a day in some water and see if it helps you. It really helps me and I take it in the morning now and that seems to help. You but, don't have to make it like jello, just stir it. No, I just stir it in the water and then just um, go ahead and um, drink it. Now, to foods. <laughs> so I kind of figured out part of my problem with the CFS and fibromyalgia was I had major food sensitivities. And I used to have really bad diarrhea. Pretty much any time I ate, I had really bad diarrhea. It was horrible. But, and I was on Imodium all the time. Well, I realized I had a gluten intolerance. So I've had to cut out the gluten, milk, corn, sugar, caffeine, and there's something else. What was the other one? I don't remember. Uh, well, anyway, let's see. Maybe that was it. Anyway, if I cut out those five things, then I feel really good. But it is an extremely, extremely hard diet to stay on. Um, I'm doing pretty good. I do have a limited amount of what I eat. But um, if I stay, if I cut out the gluten, milk, corn, and um, sugar, and caffeine, that really, really helps with um, feeling better. And one of the things especially I do... Especially the sugar. Yeah, especially the sugar for me. The sugar is a big one. Um, one of the things I noticed, like if I accidentally eat some gluten or purposely eat some gluten because I just can't resist that cinnamon roll, then the Alka-Seltzer Gold helps with food um, reactions. And if I take an Alka-Seltzer Gold, after, as soon as I realize I've done something wrong or purposely, um, it really helps negate this, the bad side effects. I don't know what happens, but there's something chemically, and a couple of doctors have found that Alka-Seltzer Gold really helps with that. And if I don't have my regular Alka-Seltzer, I can take an Alka-Seltzer Gold and two aspirin, and this will help me feel better also. Another thing is we discovered that I don't have hardly any enzymes to digest my food in one of the tests that the functional medicine doctor did. So now I take enzymes whenever I, um, eat anything and this helps a lot with a lot of the stomach problems and GI problems that I was having with it. So you might try some of the enzymes. I just take two whenever I eat um, and that helps. But um, food is a big portion of it for me. Um, if I can just stay on my diet, then that really seems to help. So that's about what I do to help with my chronic fatigue syndrome and my fibromyalgia. Now, if I can keep on top of all those things, I can function on a scale of one to 10. I would say I'm probably at a six or a seven pretty much every day. Occasionally I'll get myself up to an eight as far as energy if I'm really, really good and really careful, but it's hard. Um, noise, dogs barking, that kind of thing, light. kids yelling, lights, fluorescent lights. Shop well, also light, like at night. <laughs> there could be a security light in another house somewhere else. Oh, yeah. Sleep. Yeah. Um, things like that. Something happens and it triggers my nervous system and I just can't stand it. So I have to be really careful with things like that. So if I'm careful with those things and I have a really good day, I can get myself up to a seven or eight. But I'll, I'll be perfectly honest. Most days I'm functioning on a four to five level probably on a scale of one to ten. Ten being a normal person who has just enough energy for everything and one being dead on the couch. I'm usually about a four, five, six, somewhere around there. So 
that's kind of how I keep myself going with five kids and try to keep up. I don't keep up by any means, you know, I keep going from room to room, cleaning up disasters because I just can't keep up with it all, all the time. Um, I don't do everything on the business. Mike does 99% of it. Um, I just did the face that looks good. She's the idea person <laughs> and, uh, and the, here's kind of what I put together and translated into a language that everyone else Yeah. Will get. <laughs> so he's my proofreader and my editor to help it make sense for everyone when I put it down on, on the computer. But um, I just, I don't do it all. I have help. I have the five kids doing a lot of chores and Michael does a lot. And they think it's a lot. It's not really. Yeah, much. the kids do like 10 minutes worth of chores a day. They think they're doing three hours, but it's like 10 minutes worth of chores. But it's enough that I don't have to do it all. So. Anyway, those are some of the ways that I keep myself going with chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia. If you have some things that are working and they help you, let us know. No multi-level marketing links in there. I will delete them. But <laughs> if you have something that is helping, please let me know because I'm always happy to learn new things. And after 27 years, I'm trying to get used to it, but you still think there's maybe something new. So if there is something that's helped you, or something that's helped someone you know, let us know and we'll try and pass it on.